Kiara Lavinia Henry was born March 7, 1996 and grew up in San Diego. She was described as an outgoing, spontaneous, and adventurous young woman who always had a big smile on her face. She loved to travel, and at the age of 23, she went on vacation to Hawaii. Kiara arrived in Maui alone on July 18, 2019, where she checked into the Aston Maui Hill Hotel in Kahe. Over the next two days, she would take a couple guided tours. On July 19, 2019, she took a Hana bus tour that included a visit to Waiana Panapa. The next day, on July 20, she took a hike Maui tour of East Maui waterfalls and the rainforest, which included a stop at Twin Falls. The next day, she rented a black Nissan Sentra from Hertz rental car at the Kahula Airport at 2 p.m. for one night. This was the last date she was seen alive. Calls to her cell phone went straight to voicemail, and her credit card has not been used since that day. On July 25th, Kiara's rental vehicle was reported by Waianapanapa Park officials, and a suspicious activity case was documented by Park Patrol. The park area is approximately two hours east of the Hertz location where she rented the vehicle. On July 26, her sister reported her missing to the Maui Police Department. On that same day, park officials reported the vehicle as abandoned. Hertz retrieved the car, which had her luggage, as well as her credit card and ID, which were both found in the center console. Her cell phone, small backpack, and car key were not in the car and have never been located. Her family is frustrated because the rental vehicle was towed back and cleaned completely, losing any possible evidence. She also never got on her return flight home that was booked for July 29th. Police and volunteers searched the park area but found no clues, and police released the Hertz surveillance tapes in hopes someone would come forward with some information. Kiara's family describes her as an adventurous young woman who enjoyed hiking, the outdoors, and lived a vegan lifestyle. She is very close with her family, and it's unlike her to be out of contact for so long. Her family has traveled to Maui multiple times to search for her and reports that they will never give up. On August 5, 2021, her family increased the reward for information leading to confirmation of what happened to Kiara to $25,000. Her family created a Facebook page called Find Kiara Henry that also lists a family hotline phone number for anyone to call in tips. As of today, she has never been located and this case remains unsolved. Daniel Lambertson was born September 18, 1970 and was nicknamed Dan. He was originally from New Jersey and so was his wife Teresa, but they loved Hawaii and decided to move to Aya. The couple dated for seven years and married in October 2009. He was a realtor who recently left Hawaii Realty Group to work for Tropic Lightning Real Estate and his wife was a nurse at Tripler Army Medical Center. On January 30, 2010, the couple who were married for three months at this point attended an evening church service at Farrington High School. They met at the service in separate cars because they each had errands to do earlier in the day. They would both leave the church at 8.30 p.m., heading home for a planned dinner together, but Dan would never arrive. After Teresa arrived home, she noticed she had two missed calls from Dan, but he had left no voice messages. She would not report him missing until the next day. Three days later, his maroon 2000 Volkswagen Jetta was found by his friends abandoned at the beach park on the north shore of the island of Oahu. All his belongings, including his briefcase, were still inside the vehicle. Fire department personnel, including those in a boat and helicopter, searched the Haula Beach Park area for a few hours but found no sign of Dan. Sadly, there is little information available on this case and on Dan and his wife, and as of today, he has never been located and this case remains unsolved. Kimberly Day Jacobs was born June 30, 1961, in Los Angeles and moved to Hawaii in the mid-1990s. She has a bachelor's degree in sociology from the University of California at San Diego and a master's degree in education from the University of San Francisco. 
Her loved ones describe her as an avid traveler who had visited Peru, China, and Russia. In 2008, at the age of 47, she lived in Honolulu with her husband of three years, Stan Jacobs. The couple lived at Diamond Head Apartments in the 2900 block of Kalakaua Avenue in the Waikiki neighborhood. On August 21, 2008, she was reportedly experiencing emotional distress. She was having severe back pain, which caused her to walk with a limp, and she was also dealing with a leak in her condo. Also, the couple owned property in California, and their tenant of the property was giving her grief. Stan reportedly last saw Kimberly around 6 p.m. that day when he says that he encouraged her to get some rest, and then he left their home to go to a meeting. When he returned home two hours later, Kimberly was gone and has never been seen or heard from again. Stan didn't think anything was initially wrong and assumed she had either gone on a sailboat or over to a friend's home that lived nearby. Strangely, he only began to worry after a friend of Kimberly's filed a missing persons report. She left behind all of her personal belongings, including her cell phone, passport, cash, and credit cards. Many people have found it suspicious that Kimberly's friend is the one who reported her missing, rather than her husband. However, there are conflicting reports about Stan's potential involvement in her disappearance. Some reports state that Stan has cooperated with the investigation, but Kimberly's family members believe that he knows more than he has revealed. A blog run by Kimberly's sister states that Stan has had several memorials for Kimberly, but does not notify or invite her immediate family, including her daughter Autumn, her brother and sister, niece and nephews. Some people have commented on said post in Stan's defense, while others have also commented that they too are suspicious of him. Authorities have not publicly named Stan as a suspect, and as of today, this case remains unsolved. George Jarrett Helm Jr. was born March 23, 1950 to George and Melanie. He was the fifth of seven children and raised in Hawaii. He was described as a fun-loving kid, full of humor, but he also had an intense side. In 1965, George went to Honolulu to play basketball for St. Louis School. There, his musical talents grew under the tutelage of John and Kahana Lake. He loved jazz and blues, which came out even in his Hawaiian music. After he graduated in 1968, he started working for Hawaiian Airlines as a traveling musician. He loved his music, but a life of enticing visitors to the islands didn't sit right with him. That's when he had his turning point and started contemplating his true Hawaiian roots. Although he was becoming a popular musician with one of the greatest falsetto vocals in Hawaii in 1977, he was active in political issues and dedicated himself to the cause of Hawaiian sovereignty. He was one of many that were upset that the island of Kahola Bay had been used as a U.S. Navy bombing target since 1941. Many activists were becoming more involved with Kahola Bay's problems, especially after the end of the Vietnam War. Numerous native Hawaiian activists began embarking on secretive runs to Kahola Bay in the mid-1970s. The U.S. military did not allow civilians onto the island at the time. On March 5, 1977, George, along with two excellent watermen, Kimo Mitchell and Billy Mitchell, went to search for two friends, Walter Ritty and Richard Sawyer, who were protesting the bombing of the island and stayed hidden on the island for 35 days. The three men set out at 2 a.m. on a boat with two surfboards, an inner tube, and supplies. Little did they know that their friends had been picked up by the military that same day and arrested. Two days later, on March 7th, with their boat having sunk off the pier and with them unable to find their two friends, the three men took their two surfboards and jumped into the rough waters. However, they struggled in the high seas for some time when Billy decided to head back to Kahola Bay to get help. He walked for two hours but couldn't find help until March 8th when the Marines airlifted him from the island. He told officials he'd last seen the other men around Molokini. Both their families flew to Maui and took boats out to Kahola Bay to begin searching. 
George's brother Adolf Helm jumped into the water about a mile and a half away from the island and started swimming. Once on shore, he found what he thought was Riddy's and Sawyer's camp. He then slept overnight on the island. Not wanting to get picked up by the Navy, he donned goggles and fins and started swimming back to Maui around 4 a.m. the next morning. As he crossed the channel, two Akule approached him and swam right by his side and didn't leave him until he was picked up. He said he always thought while he was swimming that that was both George and Kimo taking care of him. The military conducted an extensive search of the area of the Pacific Ocean where the men disappeared, but there was no trace. It is generally believed that they perished in some sort of accident at sea, but many Hawaiian activists believe that foul play was involved in their disappearance. Unconfirmed sightings of George would continue into the 1980s. He and Kimo became martyrs symbolizing the Hawaiian movement. Finally, in 1990, President George Bush issued an immediate end to the live fire training on Kaholawe, and in 1994, the island was returned from the U.S. Navy back to the state of Hawaii. Every year, people who care about the island work to restore its landscape. George's musical recordings were re-released in 1996, 19 years after his presumed death. His music received critical praise and gained renewed attention afterwards. Kaholawe is now considered a very sacred island with a lot of Hawaiian cultural history. The men's disappearances are no longer actively investigated, but as of today, this case remains unsolved. Peter Kimma Jr. was born May 1, 1991 and was nicknamed Peter Boy. In August 1991, when Peter was only a few months old, he and his siblings were removed from their parents' care after authorities discovered signs of abuse. Peter had multiple broken bones, and his older half-brother, Alan, reported that his parents beat him and his siblings. The children then lived with their maternal grandparents, James and Yolanda, until 1995, when the court sadly returned them to their parents. Once back in the home of the Kimmas, they would resume the physical abuse. Peter Boy's abuse included being shot with a pellet gun, locked in the trunk of a car, and forced to eat dog feces. He was once thrown out of a window and put in a trash can. He would often be forced to sleep outside without any covers, and when he slept inside, he was tied to a bed or made to sleep on the floor in the hallway or bathroom. Grandparents James and Yolanda last saw him in 1996 and said he had a black eye and his arm appeared to be badly sprained or broken and they would report the abuse to CPS. In June 1997, Peter would go missing and his sister Lena would say she witnessed her parents kill him then attempt to hide the body. The Kimmas did not report Peter Boy missing until January 1998 after a social worker requested them to. The other children were interviewed at this time, reported abuse, and were permanently removed from the home. Their mother, Jalen Kimma, told authorities she last saw her son sometime during August 1997. His father, Peter Kimma Sr., claimed that he brought the child with him when he traveled to Honolulu to search for employment. Kimma Sr. claimed that he and his son were homeless and lived in a tent in Ayala Park with 18 other people during this time. He stated he never completed any job applications as area businesses were not hiring new workers. He allegedly gave Peter Boy to a family friend named Auntie Rose Makuakani on August 19, 1997 in Ayala Park. He claimed that he and his wife could no longer provide for Peter Jr. and Rose was better able to care for him and didn't have children of her own. Kimma said Rose was a Lahala weaver and sold hats in the park during the weekend. He also claimed that she was a cousin from his stepfather's family and a longtime friend, although he had not seen her since 1982. Strangely, his relatives said that they had never heard of her. He gave police a physical description of her, but authorities were unable to find anyone in Ayala Park who was familiar with her. He said she was planning to move to Florida when he gave Peter Boy to her. 
he produced a copy of a letter which he said he had written to Rose, stating he was surrendering his parental rights and was giving her custody of six-year-old Peter Jr. The letter was dated September 11, 1997, rather than August 19, the date Peter Sr. had claimed he last saw his son, and he had no explanation for the discrepancy. Peter Jr.'s parents admitted that they did not have any contact information for Rose, and investigators said they didn't even appear to be interested in finding him. Psychological evaluations for Jalen and Kimma Sr. found that Jalen suffered from a personality disorder with borderline passive-aggressive and dependent features. Kimma Sr. had borderline intellectual functioning and a personality disorder with alarming antisocial, narcissistic, and paranoid features. In addition to Peter Jr., Jalen had one son and two daughters living and three other children who died in infancy. When interviewed by social workers, the children stated they had all been abused, but Peter Boy was abused the most. His half-siblings, Alan and Chantel, recalled the last day they saw Peter Boy. They were outside their home when they heard a commotion inside the house. However, they were afraid to go in and see what was happening. Later that day, Kim Sr. told his stepchildren that Peter Boy was gone and instructed them that if anyone asked, they were to say that he was living with relatives on Oahu and working in a tarot patch. His younger sister, Lena, who was four at the time, recalled the last time she saw Peter Boy. She said he was unconscious and his mother was crying and attempting to revive him. In 2001, investigators excavated the backyard of the family home but found nothing. No charges were filed against the Kimmas until 2014, 16 years after the social worker requested them to report him missing because his body was never found and 17 years after he actually went missing. In November 2015, Jalen and Peter Sr. were arrested on multiple drug and weapons related charges. Jalen was also charged with welfare fraud. According to Peter Jr.'s siblings, he developed a quarter-sized hole in his arm, deep enough to put a finger into it, that constantly discharged pus. Jalen said she tried to treat the injury by cleaning the wound with iodine and hydrogen peroxide. He had health insurance coverage at the time, but she never took him to a doctor because Peter Sr. had caused the arm wound and Jalen didn't want herself or her husband to be arrested for abuse. Police believe he became septic from the wound and died as a result. Jalen pleaded guilty to manslaughter in 2016 for failing to get her son medical treatment and was sentenced to time served, which was about a year. She entered a plea agreement in exchange for her testimony against her husband. Kimma Sr. was charged with second-degree murder but pleaded guilty to manslaughter in exchange for information on the whereabouts of his son's remains in 2017 and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. He told investigators he'd attempted to cremate his son's body, then disposed of his remains in the ocean in a box in a remote area on the Puna coast off Highway 137 just south of McKenzie State Park. Extensive searches of the spot he named have turned up nothing. Peter Boy, who was abused almost from birth, was taken out of school when he was in first grade, which Hawaii County Prosecutor Mitch Roth said should have been a red flag. Roth had advocated to legislation for an alert to authorities when a child whose parents are on the radar of CPS is removed from school, but it was withdrawn from the legislative session in 2018 after encountering resistance from homeschooling advocates. Peter Jr.'s surviving siblings have brought a civil suit against the state of Hawaii, alleging they caused his wrongful death by mishandling his child abuse case. Jalen died of kidney failure related to diabetes in January 2019, and Kimma Sr. remains incarcerated and must serve a minimum of 18 years. As of today, Peter Boy's remains have never been found. <laughs>